<clears throat> Hi, hello, it's Kendo here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up, home skill biscuit? I am tired. Oh my God, I'm so exhausted. It's been one of those like weird, everything's kind of going wrong type of days. I am exhausted. Shout outs to Mac Does It. It felt, this was not planned, but it's only appropriate. It was one of those days where like every little thing was going wrong. Um, my nail, I got my nails done. They made them look like teeth. And so I had to file them down. Y'all don't care. The sun was ruining my shot earlier this morning. I just started talking to another Virgo sun, Scorpio moon. <laughs> Exhausted. Uh, but happy Saturday. <laughs> If I could get this up in time, who knows? If you don't know what Saturday is, Saturday is when I do a little something on my channel called Bad Movies in a Beat, the series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on, but I am not putting my makeup on today. Again, life has me fucked up. It's just one of those days that nothing really went wrong, but everything just feels like a lot of work. And so instead of putting on makeup, which it actually is a lot of work, I'm gonna sit here, talk about a bad movie and eat a cookie that's been in my freezer for a very long time that I forgot about. Shout outs to Milk. I've gotten sent milk cookies several times from um, companies and it's always a delight, thank you. This is the peppermint pretzel snap and it's fire. I don't even like white chocolate and this is good. Or fucking it. Ooh. Now, another annoying thing about life, bills, there you go, you got it. So I'm gonna send it over to Admiral Kenny who is also equally exhausted. <laughs> on a separate day. This is just my personality trait. I'm either filming at midnight or I'm filming at 5 a.m. There's no in between people. So we're gonna send it over to her so she can make us money. I'll pop it in to let you know that today's video is sponsored by Karma, a free app and Chrome extension that allows you to never miss another price drop or coupon code. All you have to do is download Karma, preferably from my link in the description box to get the Google Chrome extension and then Start shopping, baby. Then you can get a push notification or an email notification for when your things go on sale or when there's new coupons. Or it can also let you know when an item that was out of stock comes back in stock, which is also great if you're shopping for things. Me, furniture, I have my eyes on you. Circular stone table. I am on a very, very, very extensive search for the perfect coffee table. I don't know what it's gonna look like. Realtor that seems to be making stuff that I wanna buy, apparently it's Crate and Barrel. So what I'm doing right now is currently making a list of coffee tables so that I can stock each of them out to see which one goes on sale, slash if Crate and Barrel gets a coupon, cause what? And once I find something I like, I just click the Karma button and save it onto that list. And also if I'm using Karma on desktop, I can use their special feature to check for available coupons. It's also a great way to compare styles and prices of items that you like if you're particularly doing a project or if there's just new things that you wanna buy. And you can have all of these items from various different companies all in the same spot compiled and again, being watched for price changes. Also, if you shop with select partners, you also get Karma Cash back as well as help a good cause. So again, feel free to check it out down in the description box, download it down below. Big thanks to Karma for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery. Last week, I almost forgot what we watched last week. Last week we watched Tubi's Ebony Hustle. The story of an ex stripper turned detective who was looking to find a missing child who was kidnapped by an ex gangster rapper that went to jail, came out, found Jesus, and now runs a blood sacrificial cult. And it's free on Tubi if you would like to check it out. Feel free to watch my video on it. It'll be linked up above, or you can check it out in the Bad Movies in a Beat. Playlist. So today is gonna be a return to a series, well, not a return, more so an initial first impressions of a series that I was aware of many, many years ago, back in you know the late 2000s, in the midst of post-Twilight mania. At the time, while I was still a fan of Twilight, I had read the books and was looking for similar works that I may also enjoy. My nails are f Oh my God. Uh, I don't care enough to fix it. But in the midst of that, I was recommended a book called The Mortal Instruments. And at the time I was interested in reading them, but I decided to forego it because I heard a little spoiler. Um, and after my trauma with Vampire Night, I said, nah, I'm good. I decided that I didn't wanna put that emotional capital into the process of reading a book only to be surprised. <laughs> at the end. And though I found out that the quote unquote surprise was a lie, it still didn't make the experience any less 
uh, uncomfortable and just downright a waste of my time. So I just never got around to it. Fast forward to 2013 and that same book series, The Mortal Instruments, had been made into or was beginning production for a series of movies, you know, much like Twilight, Harry Potter, what have you. And it was a popular series. So theoretically, the movie would have did quite well amongst that audience. However, surprisingly, or maybe not so surprisingly, it didn't. And therefore it became one movie that was supposed to be a series of movies um, that never got made. And I started thinking about that fact a few days ago. I don't know what, it, what brought that thought on. I just had a realization that I never saw the Mortal Instruments movie. And people who love the books, who don't seem uncomfortable enough <laughs> with the twist, um, enjoyed the books enough that even they weren't condoning the movie. So I was just kind of confused and fascinated by that fact. So if you're not familiar with the movie, it's called The Mortar Instruments City of Bones, starring Joanna, dude from Sweeney Todd. He was in other stuff, but I know he was in Sweeney Todd as the, um, the sailor. And he was also in the Volturi, Vol well, I said that real country, Volturi in, uh, Twilight, starring him and the girl that I used to refer to as Taylor Lautner's ex with the eyebrows, AKA Lily Collins. Mind you, I'm so happy you made your way out of that love. You're, you're doing good for yourself. I'm glad to see that. I'm glad, I'm, gl I'm so proud of you. Now, if it's not obvious, I have not read the books. I have no intention of reading the books. You got me bent. No plans on reading the books. I wasn't gonna read it before watching this movie. I didn't wanna have two awful experiences just for one video. I did hear, however, that though the movies didn't have subsequent movies in the series, that there was a show called Shadow Hunters, which then reminded me of the Passion Flicks movie I talked about several months ago called Wicked that everyone in the comments just called a Shadow Hunters rip off. So that was also fascinating to actually watch this movie and make those correlations because they are both terrible and they're both incredibly convoluted. Um, that one more so than this one, at least this one kind of had a budget. It's, it's interesting to watch how passion flicks in retrospect made an even version of something that was already incredibly shitty, which is hilarious because, um, I'm not going to cite my sources, you know, your girl has sources, no, I'm joking. But from what I hear on the grapevine, that there's gonna be more movies for the Wicked series, but Mortal Instruments just coming at me. How do you get outdone by passion flicks? How embarrassing. I can't wait, honey, please send me that when it's done. I wanna see it, I wanna feel it. I want it in my bones. But with that said, having seen this movie, um, I don't quite understand why it gets as much heat as it did. I suppose that's because I don't have the reference of the books to say, wow, this is shitty. But I can kind of say, wow, it's shitty, but no like worse than any other young adult supernatural thing that was coming out at the time period. I mean, my bar was incredibly low. Again, to some degree it has to be if you know that you're walking into not quite incest story. And with that said, I'm not 100% sure what it is that made people hate this movie as much as they did enough to not make a second film. So I'd love to hear it in the comments if you guys have better insight on that, I'm sure you do. But I didn't wanna get a bunch of other people's opinions before I made this. But anyway, with that said, uh, this is Mortal Instruments. City of Bones, 2013. Our main character, our main character is Clary. And I don't know why I hate that name. I think it's because the entire time I'm watching the movie, I keep wanting to call her Claire or Carrie, but the bitch couldn't choose. She is by all accounts, a normal New York City teenager. Her mother is an artist. The mother has a really hot friend named Luke. <coughs> call me. The movie begins and it's Clary's birthday. Um, and she's planning to spend it with her guy friend named Simon, who is of course the one-sided unrequited love. Leading up to meeting with him, we start to notice that she has this obsessive pattern of drawing runes that she doesn't quite know why she does it all the time. And she ends up seeing those runes when she goes to a club with Simon for her birthday. While inside, uh, Clary witnesses a murder. <laughs> and having seen uh, this dude get taken out in the middle of a crowd. She screams, drawing attention to the murderers, but apparently no one can see them 
but hurt. One of the boys that makes eye contact with her is Joanna Boy. His name is Jace in this movie. Jace Waylon. Jace Waylon. And they have that inexplicable attraction. Now, obviously he's gonna be like our Edward equivalent or any of the like square face emaciated boy crush people that, you know, YA tends to. They don't really do a great job of making us believe that these two people like each other. We just hear words throughout the movie that's like, I will protect you with my life. Why? But I'm getting ahead of myself. So she leaves the club and she's able to get back home. And when she wakes up in the morning, she sees that she is, again, impulsively started drawing those runes all over her house and it really freaks her out. Still shaken up from the day's events prior, she goes out with Simon and she ends up seeing Jace and no one else can see him. So she's like freaking out and everyone thinks she's having hallucinations. Meanwhile, back at the house, Clary's mother has noticed that she is drawing those runes all over the place and she's getting really concerned about something, like she knows something deep is happening. But before anything can happen with that, she gets attacked by bounty hunters? Question mark? Uh, looking for something called, quote unquote, the cup. Lazy ass. The cup. You couldn't give us like anything slightly equivalent to like the Holy Grail. Didn't Little John have like a chalice. <laughs> did he, did he, did, like, come on, give me something. Make me mystify it. Give me something. Another issue I have is just the laziness associated with like nouns of import in this movie. The main treasure is called the cup. And I'm getting ahead of myself, but humans without the ability to fight mystical creatures are called mundanes. But anyway, these dudes are there trying to find that damn cup from Carrie's mother who apparently has it, at least they believe so. They are also working for some dude named Valentine. So the mom in distress is calling Clary and she's not answering because she's talking with the, um, Joanna, dude, uh, Jace. So she calls Simon, her friend, and he does not answer for some reason, which I just found wild. Like, I'm sure your best friend's mother isn't calling you regularly. Like, answer the phone. Clary, after finally answering the phone and hearing that her mom was in distress, finally gets home and her mom is missing. But there is a demon dog in her house. I will say, as awful as this movie is, they do a semi-decent job on like monster construction. I was disgusted and intrigued. It's giving octopus. The moment I said octopus, my mind went over to like, can you do like a, like a takoyaki? <laughs> what? <laughs> but Clary is an idiot. Clary, in an effort to get away from this demon dog, decides that the most practical thing to do instead of running out of the house was to pour gasoline all over the home, set her kitchen on fire, go in her refrigerator as her entire apartment explodes. This is where we find out that Jace is a shadow hunter, a demon hunter. They go to Carrie's black neighbor who apparently is a witch, which, sorry. <laughs> I'm noticing a trend here in like supernatural media, maybe of this particular time period, every black person in here is like a witch who's used very specifically utilitarianly to use spells to like propel someone else's story forward. I don't know where I'm going with that, but it's just something I noticed, just something of note. Bonnie comes to mind, I started thinking about. There weren't even supposed to be names in Twilight. <laughs> if Miss Myers had any role for that, she would not have had names in Twilight. Any, any in Twilight was begrudgingly added, trust me. I'm only kind of joking. Anyway, but the black woman provides some, of course, well-needed information for the two. We find out that the cup is uh, one of three mortal instruments. Oh my God, it's a title. And it's really important for some reason. We never fully, we might've, to be quite frank, we, we might've discovered why they're so important in the grand scheme of things, like all of those instruments, like what they do, but Girl, I was mentally checked out. We learned that apparently Clary's mother was also a shadow hunter and she had apparently hired someone to block Clary's memory so that she doesn't remember any of her past of being uh, related to a shadow hunter. Apparently Clary also has powers that are locked within her, but she can't access because she can't remember them. So now they are on a journey to find Clary's mom and perhaps open up her memories to see what's been lying deep within the depths of her mind. Luke, her mom, find a little friend, 
Um, he's also kidnapped. They find Luke being interrogated by the bad guys. Spoiler, he's a werewolf, which makes this scene make a lot more sense. You have flags? You like that? You wanna smell my derriere? There ends up being a brawl at the end of which Jace is like, I will protect you with my life. And that's what I mean, like why? <laughs> Just why? He takes her to the Shadow Hunters Institute. Um, there she passes out from, I guess, shock or her wounds or exhaustion, who knows. And there's this really choice scene that again, they're really forcing that these two people are interested in each other. And it's very, very draining. This is the part when you start tearing out pieces of your shirt to bind my wounds. If you wanted me to take my clothes off, you should have just asked. Ew. They find out that she is part shadow hunter, which means she's not human entirely. They are a race of human that were created after an angel came down to earth and fed them his blood in that cup. They have all these superpowers, but they can still die like humans from like mortal wounds. Only those that are shadow hunters can see shadow hunters when they go into invisible mode and see demons because they're invisible to other people, I guess. Most of this information is relayed through the president of the Institute of sorts. His name is Hodge. He's agoraphobic living in the basement of the Institute. He tells her the story of uh, her mother when she was a shadow hunter and also the crew she kind of rolled with. One of the people that she was associated with was a man named Valentine, who is the dude from the Tudors. That's the first thing that came to mind. I was like, oh, uh, 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 Tudor. Yeah, I wonder is it as good as I thought it was when I was, I sh first of all, I shouldn't have been watching it as a child. I was watching it at like 12 years old. That is not a, that is not an appropriate show to be watching at 12 years old. But I used to live for the scene where Anne Boleyn came in and saw that he was cheating on her. You're wenching! Just when my belly is doing his business, I find you wenching with Mr. Streamles. Oh, oh my God, it was such a good scene. Oh, it was so toxic. <laughs> I was about to say, leave him queen. She got beheaded. Um, uh, he plays the role of Valentine and his whole backstory, his evil villain origin story is that he was a part of something called the Clave, which is like a bunch of shadow hunters whose job it was, was to protect the cup. He decided to steal the cup, start using it for his own experimentation, started shooting up demon blood. <laughs> This was really funny and I don't think it was supposed to be, there's something about the like slow motion um, mad scientist thing that I just found so funny. I don't know, there's something about this movie that's incredibly anime. <laughs> I can't put my finger on it. But uh, he starts to try to find power in summoning demons and controlling demons using his own blood and demon blood in the cup and seeing what he kind of get and realizing that he was, you know, exerting too much power Clary's mom stole the cup from him and disappeared. So her memories, right? She don't have no memories. So they try to get her memories back because theoretically getting her memories back would also help her figure out where her mom is. Within the dark planes of her mind, she finds a clue to where things are going around in her head. And that is they need to find some dude named Bane. Bane is a really hot gay Asian man. Um, and apparently every year he had the power to like cleanse her memory. And once the memory is starting to come back of who she is and what her powers are, she'll start to draw that ruin over and over again. So the more she does it, that's how everyone knows to bring her back to Bane to get that removed so that she doesn't have any memories. Now, apparently the reason why she can't have any memories is that she holds secret powers or whatever that people will try to take from her. So she also must not know what or where her strength lies or something. You know, that's why supernatural bullshit. During this conversation, she also finds out that her father isn't her real father because at this point, she had always thought that her father was in these like military photos that her, that her mom had around the house, but apparently that's not even her daddy. That's just somebody she painted for a commission and they never came to pick it up. So now she has it and she's been saying, that's your real daddy, but it's not her daddy. It, and something about the realization that her mother had been lying about everything doesn't seem to bother her as much as I thought it would. But we don't have time to worry about that because Simon gets kidnapped by vampires. Keep up, hun. They find him, he's not dead, but then they gotta fight the vampires and then the wolves come 
And then they escape because sunlight and everything. And then there's this like incredibly stereotypically K-drama moment. What a missed opportunity. This should have been a K-drama. This should not have been, this should have been an anime or a K-drama. Asia would have this up, but y'all had to do this bullshit. There's another storyline that they don't develop at all, which is there's one shadow hunter that's been like impassing, mean mugging, Clary. Up until this point, it made sense because Jace seems to be like putting everybody in danger to protect this random ass girl. And this one shadow hunter is like, I'm not okay with that. When he vocalizes his, his problems, Clary correctly guesses that the reason he has a problem with her is because he's in love with Jace. When I tell you they did not develop anything in this at all, I was like, how did, what? How did you get that? And even if that was the case, what the fuck does that have to do with you being a liability? But they don't really do anything with that. It's just like the unrequited gay love B plot. But the one that they do focus on is the fact that Jace sees Clary with Simon after he's been like healing from the vampires and he gets jealous. In his jealousy, he goes to play aggressive Bach. And in the course of that, we find out that in canon, Bach was a shadow hunter who realized that if you use a certain cluster of notes, you can detect who are demons in the in the room even because they don't like the notes. At some point, this movie just becomes like 90% explaining items and expository dialogue because we have another thing we have to introduce, another trinket that is the portal. Apparently the portal allows you to go wherever your deepest desires lie, but you need to learn how to use it. Otherwise you can be teleported into purgatory, into a void. They go to a poorly CGI jungle greenhouse garden type situation. He, <laughs> it's not funny. He unprovoked brought up how his father uh, killed his pet bird when he was a child. <laughs> because of course he must be dark and brooding and traumatized because how else can we heal him with love? We see that he has a ring with his family name on it, Wayland. And then the pop ballad starts playing. He gives her a random rock. We never come back to that. And they kiss and the sprinklers go on. Outside her door, they kiss again and Simon catches them kissing, um, which becomes this incredibly cringy and convoluted three-way thing. Uh, what is it that Jay says? How quickly you dismiss our love. We were just kissing. How swiftly you dismiss our love. Okay. Simon also takes this opportunity in an in a emotional high to confess his love for Clary. Now, with that said, I love a good love triangle. There's literally no investment in any of these characters, so I could not give less of a fuck about any two people, let alone any three people or four, I guess, if you if you can if you count the other Shadow Hunter. Well, Shadow Hunter likes Jace. Jace likes I guess like little dipper type thing. Anyway, so again, Claire is starting to realize as she's becoming more in tune with her memories that are coming back that she has a new ability like every three seconds. And one of them now is that she can conjure 3D items from 2D material and vice versa. In doing that, she remembers that damn cup in one of the cards that the black witch had. So they go back to her and she's like, oh, I can get the cup out of the tarot card. Lo and behold, we find out as Jace plays Bach in the room that she has been possessed by a demon. There's a tussle. The shadow hunter that, um, is in love with Jace. I wish I had his name, but I don't think they said it in the entire movie. Um, he gets harmed in the struggle. The fight comes to an end when Simon of all people tackles her at the front door. They kill her, they get the cup. Now, thinking that they are doing something safe for mankind, they bring the card back to Hodge, the president of the Institute, but he betrays everybody and gives it to Valentine like right after. <laughs> Apparently he believes that uh, Valentine has put a spell on him that makes him agoraphobic and he wants him to release it. So he's like, here's the damn cup, let me go. Uh, he's her real daddy if you didn't see that coming. And she ends up escaping from him by putting the cup back in the card and going through the portal. On the other side of the portal, she ends up in the street when she's almost attacked by a demon possessed child. I'm sorry. So we find out that Luke is a werewolf and Luke ends up getting all his werewolf buddies together 
to uh, go with her back to the Institute to take down Valentine and get the cup. Meanwhile, Valentine is summoning demons. And for some reason, Hodge, seemingly unprovoked, is like, you should lie to Jace and Clary and say they're both your children. That will ruin their love. What? So this is the thing that made me want to not read the book. Um, because from what I understand, what I, what I read in like reviews of the book, you, you as the audience don't know that this is a lie for most of the books. So you're just here in this like awkward sexual tension between two people that may be related. So I had no interest, <laughs> I had no interest in that. Come to find out they're not, but it's still like, ew, like most, like most of this story is them like wanting to fuck, but thinking they're siblings, right? Whereas in this movie, they present no reason to give this lie. They just do it for shits and giggles. And I watched the scene over and over and over again. And I'm, I'm sitting here like, why was this suggested? Why did, what purpose does this serve? What does suggested incest do to the master plan? Like I'm confused here. People that read the book, what the fuck was the original reason for this? Like, can someone, can someone please shed some light on this? It just made it really, really awkward and creepy. And because we never got any subsequent movies, we don't, why did they do this? <laughs> but Valentine goes up to Jace and he, he said, your your ring is set to Wombo when it's supposed to be set to M for a minute. He's like, your last name is my last name and it starts with an M. You're not a Wayland or whatever. Which is funny because he thought that up on the fly <laughs> considering he just got suggested this lie, to, you know, re very recently. They find the mom finally, she's passed out. The wolves have arrived to s help fight off the demons that are now in the Institute and they get murked, they get whipped i would not have why you bring your friends to dad like, apparently the werewolves were prepared for a rescue mission not for like fighting demons which what you wolves just turn into wolves like what and nobody turned into wolves i don't know if they ran out of budget but they didn't turn into wolves for some reason at the point where they really needed to um another thing that we find out in this context is that uh clary also has the ability to pause time why we thought that hiding these skills from her would be of any benefit <laughs> even after pausing time though people getting taken out why were you sitting there waiting do so oh well okay never mind <laughs> clary finds out that they are quote unquote siblings and it's hilarious how that's never <laughs> gonna be resolved i'm sorry i'm still stuck on that that's so funny because now again there's this just awkwardness tension around them girl don't don't let her help get this storyline they'll run it anyway everything's going to shit and clary's like chill or i'm gonna throw this cup in the portal he takes the cup she kicks him through the portal but lo and behold she faked it and gave him a replica that was in the institute and the movie ends with <laughs> jason clary being in a very very uncomfortable position because they still think they're related and he kind of says like i don't believe we're related um and i guess i don't know i don't know if that insinuates that the next movie they were just gonna act like they're not related <laughs> do they like make out thinking they're siblings in the book oh fuck. i'm sorry that's not oh my god wow anyway they write off and that's the end of the movie i want my time back the movie's terrible, but to be honest with you, it sounded like it's pretty on par with everything that I didn't want to read in the book. So I don't know, people that read the book, did you note that anything was particularly terrible about this movie? You must have. They didn't want to make a second one. From what I hear, it was really expensive to make this movie, actually, now that I think back on it, which is kind of funny, because that was such a waste of all that money. I guess I was primed for worse than this, because everyone was talking about how just awful it was, and... And it's a very forgettable film. But yeah, if you have strong opinions on the Mortal Instruments series, the movies, the show, Shadowhunters, let me know. I'm curious, because I feel like I'm missing something. There's a blind spot here. What really enraged people about this movie more so than it did about the books? You know what I mean? Like you knew the, in the not quite incest incest thing was in there. <laughs> so I'm sure that's not what 
freaked people out, right? Or was it something else that I'm missing? But yeah, the movie's bad, but no worse than I would have expected it to be because the book didn't sound very good either. So, but if you have any strong opinions about the book or the movies or Shadowhunter the show, let me know. I would like to hear that because I'm curious. But yeah, if you like this video, feel free to like this video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram, Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.